Hi, my name is Monique Woodward and this is another episode of Community Designs. So why is this project so important to Bayside? The project sits on the PN Highway but between a major park and previously a building was mainly for sports clubs, introverted buildings saying nothing to the highway. Yep. And Bayside are going to replace up to 25 pavilions and this was one of the first to be done. So it wanted to say things to the community that passed by as well as present a new building for the two ovals that it faces and two clubs that mainly use it. Yeah. Should and we go take a look it. at the oval? Definitely. <laughs> cool. So Paul, tell us about this foyer and why it's so important. This is where the building twists. Yep. That's because it's going yep. around the oval. You'll notice it's actually a very narrow space. Yeah, super thin. And it's neutral to all the clubs. So this display case will actually be a way of all of the different users demonstrating their history and their achievements. Yeah. And that it runs with the timber and the lighting is concealed. So it's, it's about a potential way straight through to the oval, but also um, the contrast between the changing side of the building and the social side, and it invites you to the social side, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is really beautiful, beautifully detailed. Um, why did you decide to put that here? Oh, it's because it, uh, it doesn't belong to any of the particular clubs or spaces. It's about an entrance to the building and the building says we're, we're for all clubs, yeah. all users. And so they're all represented here and it's reasonably neutral and not particularly assigned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ownership of uh, sports clubs can be a dominant part of particular clubs. So. Yeah. Councils tend to want them to um, be open for everybody and allow everybody to have an imprint on the building. Yeah. And so this is right at the front door. People can actually have their club represented in their cups. Yeah, no, I mean, the space is kind of amazing. It's almost mm. like, yeah, the front door's there and then you lead straight yeah. out onto the oval. We can see how close it is. We, uh, it's a reasonably thin building and we were restricted on that and we had to keep viewing. Mm. Although people wanted the building to be bigger, they also want a fair amount of space out the front looking at the oval, so yeah. the building kept narrowing and getting longer. Yeah, and so this space worked the way you imagined it too? Yeah, I look, I think a lot of pavilions have traditionally, they're almost like an obstacle to get to the oval, whereas I think you've got to have that direct access if you want it. Yeah. And so um, people can feel free to come back in, but also invite them into the social areas where they mix after a game. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Paul, tell us a bit about the project. Uh, the building replaces a previous old pavilion, which was pretty dark and dingy and just belonged to a boys football club. And the council wanted a project that actually reflected a much greater range of users, such as girls, disabled, and an open, friendly building. Talk to us about this gorgeous sort of V shape here. How did that come about? Well, the the team that plays here predominantly are the Vampires, and it's one of the largest um, football, junior football clubs in Australia. Yeah. And they've got a V symbol. <laughs> it's actually red and white. Yeah. And one stage I would have had the building red as well. But, uh, so it is a little reflection of the V, but it basically the north end is social and the south end is all the change rooms. And on the south end it's collecting sun and both the V direct collect, collects water to go into water tanks, so the whole roof collects its water. You mentioned before about the sort of public and the private uh, parts of the building. Maybe talk to us about what what are the programs in that private area? In terms of the change areas, they've, they've, they're increasingly going to have girls football, yep. boys football, all the change rooms cater for disabled access, there's disabled yep. change, yep. umpires, mm -hmm. um, there's three stores for three different clubs. And the building actually to this, the PN Highway can change colours. It's got LED lighting that can light up for whoever's playing that week. Yeah. And so it's a building's partly also providing a little bit of a light show to the highway and enabling all the participants to sort of see their building and know their site. Yeah, nice. What's your favourite part about the building? Oh, I think it's the freestanding uh, all round nature of the site and the building. It just sits yeah. there. Yeah fairly self-contained and, and doesn't really have a back and a front. It's, it's got 
it twists it in the middle and so it's a V at the back but it breaks that V at the front yeah. and descends down to two legs which take all the water from the roof into tanks. So it's yeah. it's got two faces mm -hmm. and reads two ways but it's generally one singular form. Which are kind of like fangs for the vampires. Well, the vampires, <laughs> yeah. Talk about, I guess, talk about the expression, um, the architectural expression of the facade as it engages with the highway. This is about being open to the highway. All the passing people who are all starting to pass through the city of Bayside yeah. are considered as part of the users yeah. just by viewing it and enjoying it. Yeah. So I think um, that's why it uh, is a fairly strong presence. Council wanted it to say something to the highway, to yeah. all those people. So at night it says a lot in that it. it's, yeah. it's something to enjoy as you drive past. And uh, that's considered a, a relevant part of the building's role. Yeah. So that's the that's its public face, but it's also got a very public face to the oval yeah. and to the the children who play. There's up to 700 children yeah. were here at the opening wow. in the oval. Yeah. It's a lot of people, and it's viewed all around from the whole community as well. So it's it's a, it's an important building to the local community. Yeah, talk, I guess talk as well about um, the colours a bit more. And you know, my favourite uh, thing is those little lemon doors for the change rooms that's really cute but maybe talk about how it fits within the urban framework yeah well i think if at one stage if we had it in the red to match the football team we probably would have demanded too much attention of the building within this environment and the local community generally want, were looking forward to it coming but it wasn't to dominate from that yeah. point of view so we, the champagne the lucabon finish is up higher um, and then it descends underneath and does a zigzag as it descends to the ground to give it a harder quality finish down low. Yeah. So, and the big simple white V does pick up the V of the vampires, but also people enjoy the form. They enjoy um, understanding. They, they don't realize at first that this, the whole south end's got so solar panels on it. Yeah. So this building's bringing in solar to compensate for some other buildings that haven't got it. So there's a lot more on this building that it needed, yeah. but it's having a, an overall community contribution in solar energy. Yeah. Talk a lot more about uh, the, sustain the sustainable elements of the building. Well, it takes, all the water is taken down into the center and on the front legs, it descends into tanks. Yeah. They're used to flush toilets. Um, it's got um, movement sensor lighting, mm -hmm. uh, generally, solar panels for its um, electricity collect connection and uh, collection mm. but uh, it's not air conditioned it's only air conditioned in the north side it's yeah. in zoned air conditioning yeah. and it's got a, it, quite a lot of capacity to just run without particularly much energy at all all, all LED lighting as well so. yeah. perfect okay well thank you so much for your time thank you. thanks for talking to us about this gorgeous building thanks thank you We're standing in front of Oval 2 in the beautiful social rooms. I'm standing here with Felicity Federico, former mayor and councillor. Tell us why you're so passionate about this project. Last year I had an amazing opportunity when I was mayor of Bayside City Council and it was a fantastic opportunity to have what I call a courageous conversation with the community. In Bayside, we're fortunate to have open space, mm. but the issue is we've got you know 44 ovals, we've got seven netball courts, uh, our pavilions at our ovals, 96% of our pavilions did not have adequate female change facilities. 80% of our sporting infrastructure had been built pre-1960 wow. and that was an era where girls sport wasn't actually catered for. So when I was mayor last year I took it as an opportunity if you like to have this courageous conversation with the community and say look it's 2016, when are we going to level the playing field? When are we going to actually treat girls um, or, or provide an opportunity for girls so they no longer have to accept second best. Yep. Yeah, amazing <laughs> and so, so relevant. Um, tell us more about the grass ceiling campaign. Well, the grass ceiling campaign came out of a conversation that 
through this courageous conversation, a conversation mm. both with the community mm. and the leader newspaper. Mm. So the leader newspaper actually coined the phrase, the grass ceiling yeah, campaign. Yeah, so good. And it was a campaign, it was a partnership between the community, the leader newspaper, and obviously Bayside City Council. Yeah. But it provided an opportunity to actually say to our community, Girls, you no longer have to accept second best. Yeah, stinky toilets. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah. You know, urinals are not part yeah. of, you know, should, shouldn't be part of girls football. We want female friendly change facilities. Yeah. As a result of the campaign, uh, we're now standing in our second pavilion in Bayside that has now got so, female friendly change facilities but it's still not good enough. So we're still at 92% that don't have adequate female change facilities. If you look at the stats, the stats are really interesting. 60% of girls aged between uh, 15 and 18 do not regularly participate in exercise. 43% of girls aged between 18 and 24 are classified as either uh, overweight or obese. So it is an issue and there is a responsibility for all three levels of government to try and level this playing field, to try and rectify this systemic underinvest, underinvestment that goes back over generations. No, that's so crazy. Yeah. And do you, do you feel uh, the impact of this facility? Um, do you feel that it's already had an impact? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what I can say is that communities really got behind it and the yeah. community is now saying whenever we actually invest in sporting infrastructure, it's another step towards levelling the playing field. Uh, before we started the grass ceiling campaign, in Bayside, we've got 27 pavilions, and as I said before, 80% of them were built, you know, pre-1960 yeah. in another era. Uh, so as a result of this, and we were sort of on track to doing maybe one pavilion a year. Mm. Think, it, think about it, that was 27 years yeah. that it would actually take to level the playing field. Yeah. As a result of this campaign, we've actually uh, now developed our pavilion renewal strategy, and as a result of the campaign, it will take nine years to level the playing field. But nine years is still a generation of junior sport. Mm. So it actually requires a partnership with the state government and with the federal government mm. uh, to, to try and reduce that nine years so another generation of girls don't have to accept second best. Yeah, yeah. And so where do you see, um, you know, obviously you've got this plan over a nine year period, you know, how do you see your involvement going forward? Uh, well, to continue to be a really strong advocate for the grass ceiling campaign, yeah. but more importantly, to try and secure funding yeah. from state and from federal. Because as I said, it does need to be a partnership. Mm -hmm. Local government cannot do it alone. Yeah. And have you found sort of support from local businesses and other sort of community groups that are wanting to sort of come on board and um, maybe use the facilities in some way? Uh, yes, yes we have. But I think that the key direction, if you like, with this campaign is just to try and secure yeah. other sources of funding. So it's not just local government funding yeah. this campaign um, to try and level this playing field. So as, as a result of the campaign, this year, in the 16-17 financial budget, Bayside City Council have actually allocated $14.6 million wow. yep. towards uh, levelling the playing field. So there's another four pavilions ready to go. Wow. So this is you know, the first of many. Yep. So it's pretty exciting times yeah. to be a, a resident uh, in the Bayside community, to see what's actually happening. It's on the radar yeah. and it's not going to actually be off the radar until the playing field's levelled. That's so good. It is. And so what's your favourite part of this building? My favourite part of this building, there's not one particular favourite part, it's the fact that it's bringing the community get together. Yeah. And you know, there's 90 girls that play football here. Yeah. So 90 girls will benefit from this. Next year there's another two teams coming on board. So there will be 130 girls. So it's about the benefits being derived from the building. And I look at sport and I just think it's, it's you know, a fundamental ingredient in our health and well-being in our community. And sport provides that social glue. 
So it's the benefits derived from a building like this rather than specific elements within the building. Yeah, and it's also, you know, the parents getting to know each other, standing there, you know, watching in the rain or, you know, standing underneath this gorgeous sort of undercroft area. That Absolutely. Sort of, yeah, ignites that community yeah. spirit. And, the, you know, one of the unique things about the Bayside community is that we have an incredibly active junior sport community. Yeah. We've got the highest participation rate of our six local, local um, neighbouring local government areas in football, in basketball, in cricket, in netball and in cricket. Yeah. So we are an incredibly active community and you are right, it's, it's those friendships that occur at all ages. So yeah. for players, for parents, for committee members. So it's pretty amazing. You know, every time a team goes out onto that oval, 18 on the team, there's 12 volunteers, parents, supporting that team. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's an incredible network of people. Yes. Would you like to say anything else about this awesome facility? Oh, bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, you know, this is number two of 27 pavilions. We've got yep. another 25 pavilions to go. Plus, obviously, the issue with, you know, underinvestment in netball courts as well. Yep. But I would just love state and federal to recognise the value of facilities like this. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Felicity, oh, for your time. My pleasure. Really Thank you. It. Thanks. We're standing oval side with youth girls coach Rebecca and player Jess. Do you want to talk about how you see this building really shaping uh, girls sport in Victoria? Yeah, I think um, one of the great things is it's a new facility and I think with any new facility there's a lot of excitement but I think probably the main thing with this building is that it's um, got female friendly change rooms yeah. and I think that's really going to encourage female sport in the future and certainly it's a real launch pad even for this local community to get as many girls involved at the grassroots level as possible so that they've got a pathway um, into you know, into sort of um, female sport in the future. And so, and what impact does that have on you as a coach? Um, well, having uh, been a player as well um, and been in some really ordinary facilities, yeah. as a coach to be able to, to come here and, and know that I've got a really great oval uh, to play on, to train on, um, great facilities that you can, you know, go indoor and you can have whiteboard sessions, you can actually develop a whole team sort of structure, not just on field but also off the field and I think that's that's very appealing. And so have you found uh, the numbers of girls have gone up as you've been um, engaging with this facility? Yeah, I, not yet because it's very new but I think we'll definitely see that in the future. Um, certainly I know uh, the East Brighton Vampires are very keen to promote women's football and yeah. they uh, next year we'll be introducing an actual women's team and I think that's a really big step forward for this club um, who traditionally have been known you know as sort of a male club um, and now this really gives them the opportunity to expand themselves out into the Bayside community and get as many people involved in sport as possible so that you know our future looks really bright. Yeah. Jess, what position do you play? I play in the midfield. And what's your favourite part about the building? Um, probably the change rooms because it just provides comfort and it's so clean and new and that helps with our team because we can feel comfortable in our own space. Um, before when we had our old rooms they weren't clean, it was very uncomfortable to go to the bathroom, no one would even dare have a shower, it was so dirty and not good for us. The rooms give us a comfortable space to train in even if it's a wet day and the girls can have a good time being together in a room that doesn't smell and it's a good area to be in. And so you're part of the leadership team, what does that entail? It's a group that we um, help the girls and we put forward ideas to coach, we help coach be out there, like she can tell us things and go out there and tell the girls. We have good advice to give the girls and we're basically out, we're basically tickles little people that go out there for her. Yeah, amazing. Um, 
And so do you imagine that there's going to be a lot more players in the future coming up? I think so because it is such a great place to be and it should hopefully encourage more people to come and be part of our team. So Jess, what do you love about footy? Footy is just such a great sport, like it's such an Australian sport that involves everyone, like the supporters, the players and everyone around and it's so amazing and I'm so happy that women are now finally getting a chance to be a part of a team and it was originally such a male dominated sport and it is now including everyone and I think it's so great even like little five year old girls are starting to play Oz Kick and be involved so it's amazing. Yeah and do you see yourself moving to AFL? We will hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome. Thank you so much. That's great. No worries, thank you. I'm standing in the most modest space, but arguably the most important, the change rooms. The showers and the toilet facilities that are open. You can see the frames on frames on frames behind me. It makes such a big difference and it's really important that this gets implemented throughout Victoria. Join us next week for another episode of Community Designs.